The Biden administration is pursuing changes in the asylum seeking process. This is going to do nothing, nothing to address the energy bills in California. The big vote today that could change the way we pay for electricity. And if you've had your identity sold, and that's a complete nightmare. Documents found in a dumpster. How to protect your personal information. It is 6 a.m. on Thursday, May 9th, and you're up with CBS 8. Thank you so much for being here on CBS 8 Mornings at 6 a.m. We really appreciate you joining us. I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Netta Irampour. And we want to get you ready for your day. So let's start off with meteorologist Evan Narani. What shall people wear for today? Uh, well, I think it's going to be a comfortable <laughs> afternoon, but still layers. Okay. Because the morning can be a little chillier, okay. right? Mainly 50s, some upper 40s even. Uh, but in general, we're in the 50s to kick off the morning. By the afternoon along the coastline, we will be in the upper 60s with sunshine. And we know when we have the sunshine beaming down on us, it can feel a lot different than how it feels right now with the overcast skies. So overcast, 50s for now, making our way to the upper 60s with sunshine. If you're inland, we're going to watch as those temperatures make their way into the mid 70s. Here's a view of the uh, satellite radar imagery that we have right now, infrared showing that those clouds are quite abundant right now. We'll be talking more about what to expect into the upcoming weekend. No major change in sight, but we could see a couple degrees of warming going into uh, your Mother's Day weekend. Back to you. All right, Evan, thank you for that. And now today, the Biden administration expected to unveil a way to tighten the U.S. immigration system. Yeah, it wants a rule change to help officials quickly deny the asylum claims of ineligible migrants. CBS 8's Regina Arita live near the border now with details on this new regulation here. Regina? Yeah, good morning, guys. And this is really a rule cracking down on migrants who are ineligible to seek asylum. But it comes after the White House is trying to toughen its border security policies and flip the script on Republicans. I'm not an advisor to the president, but if I were, I'd say you ought to do something about this to the maximum extent of your ability. And so under this new regulation, it would allow immigration officials to quickly reject some migrants from claiming asylum earlier in the process if they're found to be ineligible. It would also apply to migrants who ask for asylum after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border illegally. Leaders from both parties say they do want to pass legislation. They just can't seem to agree on what. Now, House Republicans want a bill that meets stricter policies, but Democrats, they want the House to make up a sweeping bipartisan immigration bill that already passed in the Senate. The border is still a top issue to Americans, whether you live on the border or in the Northeast or in the Mountain West. And so we are committed to fixing this problem. And so this immigration rule change will first have to enter public comment, but President Joe Biden is expected to announce this uh, new regulation today. That's latest near the U.S.-Mexico border. I'm Regina Yurita, CBS 8. And now this just in, humanitarian aid is on the way to Gaza. It's the first shipment headed to a floating platform built by the U.S. Meantime, President Joe Biden is warning the U.S. will withhold more weapons if Israel fully invades Rafa. I've made it clear to Bibi and the War Cabinet they're not going to get our support if, in fact, they go in these population centers. President Biden told reporters no when asked if there was progress on ceasefire talks. New this morning, USC faculty have voted to censure the university's president and its provost, saying the leaders have mishandled the events around commencement. Faculty are not happy with the decisions to cancel the valedictorian speech, change graduation plans, and remove pro-Palestinian protesters from USC's campus. This morning, we are now learning more about what was found by police at the now dismantled pro-Palestinian encampment at UC San Diego. They confiscated this black sword. There's a picture of it. And they discovered several fire code violations, including propane tanks. Yesterday, hundreds of UC San Diego students walked out of class. Look at this video, this large group. They're showing their support for pro-Palestinian demonstrators. There are calls for the university's chancellor to resign over his handling of the encampment. Students are also demanding amnesty for those students who were arrested. In just five hours, the California Public Utilities Commission will vote on a proposal to charge a fixed monthly fee 
totaling hundreds of dollars a year for most households. Mm, this would change the way that we pay for electricity. CBS 8's Chris Quill live in Kearney Mason now to explain the pushback the plan's getting, but it is getting support from the governor, right, Chris? It is because what the governor's office is claiming is that this is going to be cheaper than uh, the rate that's charged in Texas and in Florida. However, some are pointing out that the usage rate is much more expensive in parts of the uh, parts of California, like here in San Diego. And so uh, you're really seeing both sides going at it here in terms of uh, supporting uh, their side on this issue. But let's get to what this proposal is. Under this, most utility customers statewide would pay a monthly flat charge of twenty. $24.15. That adds up to nearly $300 a year. Remember, this is in addition to the rate of usage. That rate through uh, uh, will likely drop to five to seven cents per kilowatt hour. But critics are saying it's not clear who this benefits. It would be less of an incentive for larger homes to save and cut back on their electricity usage. Utility Consumers Action Network, which is based here in San Diego, one of those critics, they're calling for the state to scrap this entire fixed rate plan and start over. So, quite frankly, it can continue to grow and grow in years. And even if there are some household demographics that can realize savings, uh, there's nothing that's going to stop and perhaps see bills overall continue to climb. Now, the Public Utilities Commission is going to be meeting today, this morning, to vote on this. That could happen sometime around 11 o'clock. So continue to check in with us during our midday show for all of the very latest. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris Grove, this morning we are working for you and looking into what you can do in case your identity gets stolen. This comes after documents with Social Security numbers were found in an open dumpster in Bonita. They belong to a man who hired a moving company to dispose of them. Another man found them while making his rounds at a shopping center he helps maintain. Right away, I seen Social Security numbers, names, addresses, titles to their head, deeds to their house. And I'm like, what the hell? This stuff's supposed to be shredded. The owner of the documents says he called the business owner and she apologized. But while we were getting the video, one of her employees came out. Don't touch the camera. Don't, no, don't, don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't, 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 don't touch. Okay. Put it in my face. Okay. Yeah, the business owner told us she was trying to get all the files back so she could make sure they're properly disposed of. It's unclear if any data was stolen in this case, but this is raising concerns about information getting into the wrong hands. We reached out to the Identity Theft Resource Center. They say first, find out what data was compromised. Second, make sure all of your accounts have unique 12 plus character passwords. Also enable multi-factor authentication on all your accounts. Make sure to freeze your credit and do not click any links or attachments in the messages you are not expecting. The 12 character passphrases is something that I need to maybe uh, mm -hmm. get a little better at. Mine's Whoa. not quite that. And but, now uh, I feel like every time I make a new password, it's like one uppercase, one lowercase, one character, one number, yes. at least 12. One emoji. Total, one one emoji. Exactly. Right. Like, Include the name of several people yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> a trivia question. Exactly. But if it's even anywhere close to what you used to use, it doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It can't be similar. We right. know your password for every website. If it's even yeah. close to one of them, you can't use it. And it's such a unique password that you find that you can't remember. I that's never my remember. Problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest issue is I get I'm like, I, I wish that a hacker right. could get into but some of my accounts because I can't get into them. Or anything. Like, that's not a good no, thing. No, exactly. Hacker, what was just, my password? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> could someone please hack into my account to figure out what I used as a password? Uh, it's 6.08 right now, about to be 6.09. We start off our day with upper 50s mainly. You can see how there are some 40s as we move off east toward the mountains. Julian, 43 degrees right now out the door 48 in alpine 55 in ramona 59 in encinitas carlsbad and del mar here i uh, want to point out that this morning we're seeing temperatures that are a bit warmer than yesterday so when we compare our temperatures right now to 24 hours ago that change on hand is dramatic as you move farther east ramona julian for example six degrees warmer but even along the coastline we're uh three four degrees warmer from carlsbad down through del mar two degrees warmer than this time yesterday in san diego weekend beach Forecast, a lot of sights set on the Mother's Day weekend, and it should be a very pleasant one. A.M. clouds, P.M. sun. Want to point out that in most cases, A.M. clouds are more reserved for the early A.M., so sunrise all the way up through 
9, maybe 10 a.m., and then we start to get that sunshine. But it's almost a guarantee that by the actual afternoon, so the p.m. hours, we'll get more and more of that sunshine on hand. Maybe a degree or two warmer going into Sunday, but no guarantees. Otherwise, we're both days looking at mainly low 70s along the coastline. And it's part of a trend that is going to lead us to 10 days of within average temperatures. Average being 70 degrees, you can see how the most we fluctuate is about two to three degrees on either side. So tomorrow, for example, could be a little bit cooler, and then we'll get a little bit warmer going into the weekend. But either way, I mean, you've got a very pleasant next 10 days on hand, stretching all the way through next week, no indication of wet weather, 10 days straight of dry skies. Not a surprise for this time of year, but it seems like we are finally kind of out of that wet stretch of weather that we saw for January, February, and March. It was very, very wet out there. Let's check in on traffic. It is 610 on the clock, and so far it is a generally quiet start to the morning commute. I want to point out that this crash that has not been cleared that we covered about a half hour ago is now starting to cause some delays. This is on the 805 southbound at H Street, number one lane blocked and HOV lane blocked with that crash. It's also close to the Telegraph Canyon Road exit, so likely right in between the two. And the southbound lanes of the 805 are now starting to see that congestion. You can kind of make out that orange tone that we have between that uh, icon of the cars and the text there. So uh, now we're starting to see that uh, congestion is picking up. CHP on scene trying to clear that as quick as possible. Border wait times outside right now. Sandy Seat Port of Entry, hour and 30. Otay Mesa Port of Entry, not much faster, but 10 minutes. It's going to be about an hour 20. This is at least a lot faster than where those speeds were as of yesterday morning. I'll send things back to you. Thank you so much. And still had new incidents involving Boeing planes. One of them caught on camera. Plus, a man accused of grabbing a boy on the street is sentenced. Why he says it was all a misunderstanding. It's time for you guys to match or do something for, for us flood victims. San Diego, sound off on the mayor's proposed budget.